Hey there, fellow explorers of the unknown. Welcome back to On the Inside, your portal to the most fascinating realms of knowledge, discovery, and adventure. On the Inside is your trusty guide into the depths of mystery and wonder. Whether it's delving into hidden histories, unearthing ancient secrets, or unraveling the mysteries of the universe, we're here to satisfy your insatiable curiosity. So if you're ready to journey with us on the inside, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss a thrilling adventure. How does time function in the Star Wars universe? Navigating the intricate web of time in the Star Wars universe can be quite the challenge. With concepts like the world between worlds and various aspects of the force opening the door to time travel and flashbacks. The rich tapestry of Star Wars storytelling, notably in series like Star Wars. The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels often requires us to delve into the past to grasp the present. Questions abound such as when exactly Grand Admiral Thrawn Lars Mikkelsen and Ezra Bridger Eman Esfandi Taylor Gray disappeared and how long they've been absent. The complexity intensifies when you consider that Star Wars lacks a fixed calendar or timeline, leaving us without a single point of reference to anchor all these narrative threads. For instance, you might view Ahsoka's storyline as occurring around a decade after the conclusion of Rebels, or even further when compared to the Clone Wars. The Mandalorian kicks off roughly five years after the events of Star Wars. Episode 6, Return of the Jedi itself, set three decades before Star Wars The Force Awakens, with so much chronological hopping, visualizing the causes and consequences of pivotal moments in galactic history can be dizzying. What is the most common time frame in Star Wars? To bring some semblance of order to this temporal mayhem, it's essential to identify recurring patterns and popular methods of timekeeping in the Star Wars galaxy. While the Mandalorian and the Force Awakens may use Return of the Jedi as their reference point, the upcoming series, The Acolyte, has chosen to draw inspiration from Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, in its promotional materials. However, when examining the structure of the Star Wars galaxy and its unfolding events on a broader scale, it becomes clear that the true epicenter is Star Wars. Episode 4, A New Hope. There are several compelling reasons for this choice. Most notably, A New Hope is the film that birthed the entire Star Wars franchise in 1977. One could argue that everything that followed hinged on the monumental success of this inaugural movie. Without it, there would be no two sequels, no prequel trilogy, no sequel trilogy, no array of TV series, movie spin-offs, games, novels, comics, and other cultural phenomena. Prior to the release of the prequel trilogy, it was simply known as Star Wars, the one and only. It is in essence the gravitational center of the entire franchise. Another compelling rationale is that A New Hope is a cinematic titan. It stands as one of the highest grossing films in history, a cultural milestone and a reference point that transcends Star Wars fandom. While Darth Vader's revelation as Luke Skywalker's father in the Empire strikes back may be one of the franchise's most iconic moments, everything else still traces back to a new hope. Phrases like use the force Darth Vader's ominous breathing, the iconic pew pew of blasters, the majestic flight of starships, and the distinctive hum of lightsabers, they all find their origins in this seminal work. This familiarity makes it a convenient reference point even for those unacquainted with the Star Wars universe. What sets a new hopes apart as the ultimate time reference? As established earlier, the Star Wars universe lacks a single definitive time reference, leading to a reliance on convention. No emperor in this galaxy decided to craft a calendar around the birth of a savior for the simple reason that there is no savior in Star Wars. Instead, Significant events serve as the markers of time. Even under this perspective, a new hope emerges as the epicenter of galactic history, largely due to a pivotal event, the destruction of the first Death Star in the Battle of Yavin. Virtually everything of galactic consequence that transpired before the Battle of Yavin can be seen as leading up to that climactic moment, with scarcely any exceptions. So trade blockade on Naboo, a long-standing political conspiracy culminating in a decades-long war, a disillusioned Jedi Padawan's departure from the Order, a young man escaping the mean streets of Corellia, and a girl orphaned and raised by an extremist, these narratives collectively converge on the Battle of Yavin. The same holds true for the events that followed, 
Without the Force-sensitive pilot's fateful shot, there would have been no hunt for the rebel hero. The romantic tale of a scoundrel and a princess might never have unfolded, and the galaxy may never have witnessed the possibility of resisting tyranny. These factors have led to the convention of dividing the Star Wars calendar into before the Battle of Yavin BDI and after the Battle of Yavin ABA, with the numerical values decreasing before the event and increasing thereafter. Accordingly, a new hope is designated as 0 BBY. The Phantom Menace unfolds in 32 BY and Star Wars. Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith occurs in 19 BY8. The Mandalorian commences in 9 ABI, while Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker unfolds in 35 ABY. Are there alternative time measurement systems in Star Wars? Indeed, there are alternative methods for measuring time within the Star Wars universe, mirroring the diversity found in our own world. Over the centuries, our own societies have adopted various calendars. For instance, the French Revolution endeavored to establish its own calendar using its revolutionary moment as the starting point. And Russia clung to an outdated calendar until the 20th century. However, the Gregorian calendar now reigns as the conventional standard. So as in contrast, Star Wars lacks a universally accepted calendar presenting a unique challenge. The B by to a B to a B wide system isn't an absolute rule and doesn't enjoy widespread acceptance even within the Star Wars universe. People often gravitate toward referencing significant events closest to their own time. The Galactic Republic endured for millennia. The Galactic Empire, while only lasting 24 years, left a lasting impact. The New Republic struggled for three decades, despite noble intentions. Moreover, the vast expanse of the galaxy hosts diverse star systems, each with its own rotation periods and customs, making it impossible to impose a single unified calendar. When The Force Awakens premiered, it was marketed as taking place 30 years after Return of the Jedi rather than 34 years after A New Hope, a sensible choice. This made it easier to convey to audiences. Remember the grand celebration at the end of the previous Star Wars film? Well, this new one unfolds three decades later. The round number, 30 facilitated calculations. Today, Lucasfilm likely faces the opposite challenge with the rise of Skywalker, set 31 years after Return of the Jedi, but 35 years after A New Hope. Each system has its advantages and drawbacks, and ultimately, the one chosen is the one that simplifies communication. So Asuke is set in Ninabi, while its flashbacks likely span at least 19 BB and possibly further back. And that's a wrap for today's exploration, folks. We hope you had as much fun going on the inside as we did. But remember, the adventure never ends here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you're the first to know when we embark on our next thrilling quest. Thank you for being a part of our incredible journey. And until next time, keep the spirit of exploration alive. Stay curious, stay adventurous and stay on the inside.